All right, I think we're good to go. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to our Ask an Expert uh, series. Uh, my name is Greg Carroll with the Uptown Chamber of Commerce, um, and we're really excited to have you all with us tonight for a topic that I'm excited to hear about. I don't even have any pets, but I'm excited to hear uh, what Dr. Uh, Bashali Joshi has to uh, share with us. Uh, and we're gonna get to her soon enough. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna start off with a quick video. We thought it'd be fun to give you a tour um, and get to know Dr. Joshi just a bit and some of her team members before we jump into the presentation. Uh, before I forget to mention, uh, there is, I believe we have the Q&A function open on the webinar. Uh, we had a few questions that were pre-submitted uh, that Dr. Joshi is going to get to. If throughout the, uh, the presentation, the video, if you have any questions uh, that come to mind, put them in the Q&A. We'll also be looking at the chat feature if you're more used to that. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be uh, scanning both of those for any questions that you have. But feel free to, um, to share. There's going to be plenty of time to get all your questions answered. And, uh, but like I said, first, we'll kick it off with a quick video. And here we go. Hi everyone, welcome to Wagnolia. We're at the corner of Wilson and Magnolia in Uptown. And you can't miss us, because you'll see this big mural right out here. Um, this mural was painted uh, by Carolyn Brown. It was actually commissioned by the Uptown Chamber of Commerce. Um, Carolyn painted this entire mural by herself uh, during the summer of 2019. Um, and she just did a wonderful job encapsulating some of our pets, some of our staff pets are on there. Uh, this uh, is Jackson. He passed away right before Wagnolia opened, but um, Carolyn just did a wonderful job of getting him uh, involved in this practice. Um, and then over there, that little snorkel guy is uh, Naus. He is also my cat. Um, and so um, it's really just cool to, to be able to walk up here every morning and see my own pets um, on, my, on my wall as I walk into the clinic. Okay guys, well, I would love to show you uh, the space. I would love to show you the clinic. So Wagnolia actually uh, used to be a Starbucks. So um, check it out, see what you think. So when you walk in, you'll see our front desk. We'll see um, a couple of our receptionists here today. We've got Randy and Mary. <laughs> We're both <laughs> busy answering questions, but if you need anything, feel free to email us or call us, um, and we'll help you out. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. <laughs> This is our treatment area. So this is where you'll see our doctors working, our veterinary technicians and assistants working. This is where um, we take the time to examine your pets, we take the time to get to know them and to treat them. We've got um, an isolation area. We've got a surgical area for specifically geared towards dentistry. Um, there's some kennel space there, so we've got some of our pets hanging out there today. We've got uh, our in-house lab testing, so if there's an emergency and we need to check something right away, we can do that right here in the clinic. Um, and lastly, we've got our x-ray area, so for fun times, if your pet ate something weird and we need to check it out, this is where we do it. And then once COVID restrictions have ended, we'll start to see you guys back in the clinic. So we've got three exam rooms. Here's one of our exam rooms here. And within our exam rooms, we've got a table for our kitties. So if you need to have your kitty examined on the table, we'll examine it here. We'll put a soft towel and use something called Feel Away, which is a pheromone spray to help them feel comfortable when they're in the clinic. Um, small dogs will also check out on our tables here, but if you've got a big dog, so for our burners and our labradoodles, we'll see those guys right on the floor. So they've got a lot of space right here, and we've got a non, or excuse me, a non-slip floor for them to, to be able to stand on comfortably as they have their exams. So Wagnolia is a uh, full-service, progressive, uh, state-of-the-art veterinary clinic. We provide preventive care, including vaccinations uh, and early diagnostics. We also provide surgical care services, um, including dentistry, spays, neuters, 
Um, and then we actually work with a couple of um, veterinary boarded specialists. So a boarded surgeon and a boarded internal medicine specialist will also come uh, see patients at our clinic so that we can provide the best of care possible within our space itself. We will uh, cater to all ages, so puppies all the way up to geriatric care. We know that each pet has its specific um, needs and we will do our best to, have to tailor our services to each particular pet. I came up with the concept of Wagnolia when I was still an associate veterinarian in Lincoln Park. I wanted to do something, I wanted to start a space where I could treat patients in the way that I felt they should be treated. I wanted to make sure that I was providing individualized care for each of my patients. I wanted to create a space for staff to be able to come in and add to the practice, basically uh, just grow in their careers as they were here. And then finally, I wanted to start getting out into the community. I wanted to build a space uh, that allowed for communication and education for the clients. And I wanted to make sure that as I started this practice, I actually got out and, and started outreach, started working with um, different organizations around the community and, and made it so that Wagnolia is not just Wagnolia, but it's a part of Uptown itself. And speaking of Uptown, this is, yeah, this is the, the area that I, I chose. I love Wilson Avenue. I'd been out here to a couple of the other small businesses. Um, Kalish in particular is one of my favorite restaurants. Um, so as I came out and visited Wilson Avenue, I just really wish that a spot would open up that, uh, that I could call my own, and it did. And so here I am, um, and I'm super excited to be here. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, and uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Joshi. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Give me just a moment. I'm going to set up my screen and, um, and we'll get started. Okay. Okay. Um, so welcome to the first episode of um, Uptown Chamber of Commerce's Ask an Expert series. Um, I'm Dr. Vishali Joshi and I'm just thrilled to be here. Um, today's presentation, The Tooth About Cats and Dogs, is a um, presentation that will focus on oral care uh, for our pet dogs and cats. I'll uh, give a brief presentation on the topic itself, and then I'll open up the floor uh, for any questions that you may have about perhaps your own pet's uh, dental care needs or even any other general questions that you may have about your pet's health. Um, you may submit them, just as uh, Greg mentioned, through the Zoom um, Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's start with the hard tooth. Um, dental disease is the number one illness affecting pets today. Um, side note, obesity is number two. Surveys show that almost 60% of owners don't know that they can take steps uh, to, to help um, prevent dental disease in their pets at home, and we'll address some of those steps uh, a little bit later today. Uh, by age three, 70% 70, uh, 70 of cats and 80% of dogs will have dental disease. And lastly, um, efforts at home can actually help your pet live up to 20% longer. So dental disease, while a singular disease process, has many long-term effects that go beyond the mouth. Bacteria that uh, create plaque and tartar in the mouth will compromise blood vessels within uh, the gum tissue and shoot bacteria right into the bloodstream. These bacteria will target high blood flow organs such as the heart, the liver, and the kidneys. Postmortem human and animal studies show that uh, there is a correlation between the level of periodontal disease in the mouth and the incidence of heart, liver, and kidney disease. Dental disease is painful. Fractured teeth, abscessed teeth, bleeding, and sore gums hurt. Chronic pain leads to lifestyle changes that are often and sometimes mistakenly attributed to age and personality. 
Dental disease affects our relationships with our pets. When our pet's breath is terrible, we don't want them to lick our faces and our, our hands. Um, when, our, when our pet's mouths are painful, they become more sedate and they spend less time interacting with us than they did before. Pets with painful dental disease may become head shy and avoid normal play and interaction with their owners and their other uh, pets in the household. Signs of dental disease include, but are not limited to, unexpected weight loss, behavioral change, including irritability, um, lethargy, like we talked about bad breath, um, decreased appetite or abnormal chewing patterns, um, also drooling. In a senior patient, it's even more uh, vital to look out for these signs. Senior pets are often, often struggling with other conditions such as arthritis, kidney disease, and diabetes that can create confusion about what disease process is causing which symptom. In some cases, multiple disease processes could be causing the same signs. Physical assessment by a veterinarian and diagnostic assessment, including blood pressure assessment, urine, blood, and uh, stool assessment are integral to diagnosing and treating these conditions. In many cases, uh, these uh, conditions must be controlled first before we can even um, treat the dental disease. Um, for reference, let's take a brief look at um, a cat and a dog's dental anatomy. Um, just like your dentist uh, charts each of your teeth using uh, dental x-rays and periodontal probing, uh, veterinary teams will do the same uh, for your dogs and cats. An adult cat has 30 teeth, while an adult dog uh, normally has 42 teeth. And for reference, an adult human has 32 teeth. Dental procedures in veterinary medicine are often called um, dentals or dental cleanings. Well, it's actually more than that, so let's change the terminology. These procedures are complete oral health assessments and treatments, and I'll explain the details of the assessment and treatment in just a moment. It's important to understand that thorough assessment requires a still patient. For this reason, all of our complete oral health assessment and, tr and treatments are completed under general anesthesia. Safe general anesthesia prevents injury and undue stress to our pets. It also offers an opportunity for the most thorough pain management and comfort. At Wagnolia Veterinary Clinic, anesthetic safety includes a thorough physical examination, and assessment of each pet's blood cells and organ function prior to administration of anesthesia. During the procedure, each patient has an intravenous or IV fluid therapy to ensure appropriate vital function. Monitoring parameters include blood pressure, EKG, oxygenation levels, as well as a dedicated veterinary technician assigned to physically monitor each pet from start to finish recording and communicating vital findings to the veterinarian throughout the procedure. Um, if you're looking at this picture, hopefully you guys can see my cursor. Um, so this is our anesthesia machine right here. Um, the anesthesia machine uh, basically uh, is in charge of uh, oxygen outflow and anesthetic outflow to keep our patient um, sleeping and comfortable during the procedure. This machine here uh, is the same type of machine that you would find in your dentist's office, uh, and it houses the tools needed to clean and scale your pet's teeth. Uh, lastly, this little red blanket here is actually attached to a hose that is attached to a machine back here, and this machine blows hot air uh, into this blanket uh, to keep our patients warm during their procedures. So let's get back to that assessment and treatment. Um, the assessment includes dental x-rays and periodontal probing in addition to a thorough physical assessment of the surrounding soft tissue in the mouth, including the palate, the tongue, and the lymph nodes of the head and neck. Periodontal, pro oh, excuse me, let me go back. Periodontal probing is an assessment of the gums, uh, gum tissue's attachment to the tooth. The lower the probe sinks in, so here's a little probe right here, the lower the probe sinks in against the tooth, the more advanced the state of the periodontal disease of the tooth. So 
in this picture right here, here's the tooth and this pink tissue is the gum. So we can see that there's really nice uh, tight adherence between the tooth and the gum. And that pocket, that periodontal probe can hardly uh, uh, press in there. And then conversely, in this picture, we can see that there is a vast um, separation between the gum tissue and the tooth itself, creating a pocket for that periodontal probe to sink right into. When we have a loss of attachment between the gum and the tooth, we have this pocket. And what this pocket does is basically create a haven for food and bacteria um, to basically become trapped. Uh, and then once we have uh, that type of um, uh, entrapment of the bacteria, it's going to create further degradation of uh, the tissue. So what will then happen is we will start to see um, that the bone that adheres the tooth into the mouth itself, that bone uh, will start to degrade and we will start to see attachment uh, loss of the bone to the tooth, creating then a loose tooth and a space for uh, abscessation of the tooth root itself. Uh, full mouth x-rays allow us to assess the tooth for bone loss, damage to the tooth root. And in the case of cats and even some dogs, they will allow us to assess for other common and painful phenomena, such as tooth resorption, which is pictured here. So if you look at this tooth, or uh, really if you look at these three teeth right here, um, they are pictured above in this x-ray. So specifically, let's look at this tooth right here. We can see some redness of the tooth, so we might think maybe there's some inflammation, maybe there's some gingivitis, but the tooth itself, at least here, looks really nice and healthy. Well, let's go back to this x-ray and see what we're finding. Let's, these two teeth here have very nice, healthy roots, whereas this one is completely broken down and degraded. And what is going on here is tooth resorption, which is a very painful process and commonly found in cats. Without x-rays, we wouldn't be able to diagnose this. And a, just, a, uh, just a thorough cleaning itself will not be enough to treat this cat's pain. Treatment of the mouth includes scaling of the tooth and scaling under the gum line where your toothbrush can't reach. So tartar, let's point out tartar here. So there's all this hard, nasty yellow stuff. So pretty much all of the teeth in this dog's mouth have tartar. Uh, tartar is essentially, it is hardened plaque, and plaque is the accumulation of bacteria. Removal and tartar and plaque is essentially removal of large swaths of harmful bacteria from the mouth. If painful teeth are observed during our assessment, uh, extractions and other treatments may be required. In these cases, Wagnolia doctors will administer intraoral uh, local blocks and pain medications that will stick around uh, and help manage pain during the procedure and for several hours afterwards. So let me uh, show what's going on here. So this syringe right here has medication that is now being directly injected into nerve tissue that uh, once uh, that medication um, is administered, it is going to create a local pain management for this uh, aspect or this section of the mouth here. Okay, so now that your pet's mouth has been evaluated and treated, or perhaps your veterinarian has advised that it's okay to start home dental care, well, where do you start and how do you start? Um, there are many home dental care um, options and um, products that are available on the market, but sadly a vast majority of those products have not undergone any safety or efficacy testing. Your veterinarian may advise uh, very specific home dental care products tailored to your pet's needs, but if she hasn't, you can always review products included uh, in the Veterinary Oral Health Council list of accepted products. The Veterinary Oral Health Council, known as VOHC, is a group of board certified veterinary dental specialists who have reviewed uh, data on different dental products that can be found over the counter. Their list of products include uh, dental treats, such as um, greenies that this little dude's chewing on here, uh, dental diets, so Hills uh, makes a, a diet called TD that is specifically geared towards dogs and cats that have heavy tartar buildup, um, as well as other uh, potential rinses, water additives, or food additives. 
um, brushing by far is the most effective means of plaque control. So you can see this kitty right here who um, actually seems to be pretty comfortable, at least in this snapshot. Um, it is actually uh, something that um, really, I, I think a lot of uh, clients and pet owners are worried about. They say, I wanna brush my cat's teeth or I wanna brush my dog's teeth, but he won't let me do it, he doesn't like it. Um, a couple of things that are important to remember. One, make sure that your pet's mouth has been evaluated before you start brushing the teeth. If there are painful lesions or painful uh, areas in the mouth, your cat or dog is not going to want for you to brush the teeth and it actually will create a negative experience. So conversely, let's say, you know, every, like we said, everything's been assessed, you're ready to go, and you want to start brushing um, your pet's teeth. The most important thing is to um, start acclimating your pet. So you want to make sure that you follow a process to make your pet feel comfortable for the brushing process. Um, I am going to, and I, I'll have a resources page at the end of uh, my talk here, and there is a link um, for a four-week cat toothbrush acclimation plan, um, which can be used for dogs as well. So make sure you uh, take a picture of that if, if um, you know, you're still, you're still there at that point. Um, the um, Acclimation process is so key because essentially when you are teaching um, your pet to be comfortable with brushing of the teeth, you are starting um, the, the, the first step in a process to creating a, a, a lifelong routine for your pet. So if you start strong and you make sure that you, you take the steps needed to make your pet feel comfortable, that's going to really pay off for you in the long run. A couple of things to remember, perhaps you've already started brushing your pet's teeth. Um, the, the, the main pieces to remember, um, you only need to clean the outer surfaces of the tooth. So the surfaces of the, the tooth that are kind of pointing inwards towards the tongue, you don't need to try to get that toothbrush in there, you really just need to brush the uh, external uh, portions of the teeth. Uh, make sure that your uh, toothbrush, whether you use a finger toothbrush, a kid's toothbrush, um, or for cats, there are these um, like special ergonomic kind of toothbrushes. Like you'll see this little guy's um, getting that small little toothbrush head for cats. Um, just make sure what you're using is appropriate uh, uh, for a cat. It, it should have soft bristles um, to prevent uh, tearing up their gums. Um, and make sure that the toothpaste that you're using is a prep is a pet friendly edible toothpaste. Uh, VOHC has uh, toothpaste recommendations that you can, you can look at. Um, and that way you're using something that's safe. Um, hopefully it's tasty and um, you'll, you'll have a good, good place to start. Um, now, if you remember one thing from this talk, I want you to remember this. So um, go ahead and put out your left hand. Um, your palm should be facing the ceiling and then take your right thumbnail and create an indent into your palm. So you should be able to see that. When you create an indentation, you should be able to see that indentation in your palm. Once you know how to do that, which is pretty simple, I want you to start doing that with every single dog, toy, chew, or treat that you are offering to your dog. If you are unable to create that indentation, that means that that toy or chew is too hard. Um, so let's actually take a look. Let's get a visual on this. So here's a nice healthy dog's mouth. Um, we see these nice healthy pink gums. These teeth are all nice and intact, no evidence of uh, damage. Now these teeth in particular, these are the molars and the premolars. These are the guys that are used to chew. Now let's add a hard toy. So for example, I put in an antler bone here. This is what we risk right here. So getting a close-up of that, this tooth right here has been fractured. This little red spot right here is the exposed pulp chamber of the tooth. The pulp chamber holds onto the blood supply and the nerve supply of the tooth. And once exposed, as you can imagine, is very painful. This tooth, unfortunately, has to be either extracted or referred to a veterinary dental specialist for a root canal. Either way, Unfortunately, this injury was uh, avoidable. I'm actually gonna go back one, once more um, and just mention that a lot of times uh, there, there are some dogs who just really love to chew and chew and chew and chew and they'll just chew up everything. And clients are worried, well, like, what am I supposed to feed? What am I supposed to give to my dog? He chews 
on everything and he destroys everything else. The only thing that he can chew on are, are bones and, and antlers. What that indicates uh, oftentimes is that there might be something else going on um, with your dog. So perhaps your dog is stressed, perhaps it's anxious, or maybe it's not receiving enough physical or mental activity at home. And it, it may be something else as well. Talk to your veterinarian about alternate options uh, for your dog in that case. Okay, um, well that wraps up the presentation aspect of this webinar. Uh, this is a picture of our technician Roxana holding um, our adorable patient Elliot. Uh, the picture really embodies our daily vision of providing um, safe and effective patient care while keeping our patients as happy as possible. Um, thank you all for being here, and the Wagnolia team looks forward um, to serving your pet's health care needs. So at this time, um, I'd like to open up the floor for the Q&A session. Um, I'll also uh, just slide on over here to the resources page uh, for your reference. Um, there's the VOHC, the uh, Oral Health Council can be reached right here. This is um, the American Veterinary, uh, oh shoot, AVDC. American Veterinary Dental College. So they are, um, these are the, our board certified veterinary specialists. So veterinarians who have gone uh, through the same training as me, but then have gone on uh, to complete residency training um, in dental specialty. So they're, they're there for um, our more complicated cases. Um, like I mentioned that root canal for that patient, that is something um, that, that uh, a veterinary board spe special, uh, specialized dental specialist would be um, treating. Um, I've got a little uh, video here for cat burrito wraps or towel wraps. Some of you may have seen us doing that uh, with our kitties. Um, in that video that Greg had shown, we had a little kitty kind of uh, snuggled into a towel there, and that helps to keep them nice and safe, um, and it also keeps them in place. So um, this is something that as you look at this four-week brushing your cat's teeth training program, um, you can incorporate that towel wrap um, to help keep your patient or keep your kitty um, nice and still. Um, okay, well, I'm set there. So, Greg, um, would you please read off our questions? Yes. Yeah, so, thank you again, Dr. Joshi. Uh, yeah. that was great info. Uh, excited to have you with us tonight. We had uh, uh, two or three of you uh, pre-submitted some questions, and then I've seen a few more come through. Uh, so, we've got plenty of time. We're going to get through all of them. Uh, but please, if you have, uh, you know, anything that comes up, um, you know, from this point forward, continue to throw it in the chat or the Q&A. We'll be looking at both. Um, so the first one, I believe you might have touched on, but you might just want to remind. Uh, the question is, my issue is not being able to brush our non-compliant cat's teeth. Uh, I have a proper brush and paste, which she does not take kindly to. Any advice? Yeah, yeah. Um, I my my first recommendation would be, of course, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you touch base with your veterinarian. Make sure your cat um, is is examined. I do advise um, cats and dogs be examined once every six months so that we can get an idea of what's changed. A lot of things can change within a year, um, and so making sure that there's no evidence of pain in the mouth is number one. Okay, so let's say you've already done that. The next step is um, that that I, I do think that the four week uh, training program might be beneficial for you and your kitty. Um, the big things, and I'll kind of highlight um, what what is entailed there. So, um, it's the the that four week training program is a conditioning program to help um, your cat feel safe. It's so important for your cat to feel safe um, during the 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 brushing aspect. If she is scared, that is not going to be beneficial to her. It's not going to be beneficial to you. Um, so I do encourage you to review that training program um, and see how it goes. And if if there is still you know if you're still having some trouble um, with the brushing aspect, please do um, schedule a consult with us. Let's let's have a discussion about what's going on um, and make sure that we can uh, help direct you to the right resources. Whether it's us teaching you how to do it or perhaps um, uh, uh, setting you up with one of our local um, positive reinforcement based trainers who can also help teach you. Great, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is about bad breath. Uh, the question is, I have two cats and one of them has some severe bad breath. I've tried adding an oral health supplement to mm -hmm. his water, but it has not helped. 
Got it. Got it. Uh, bad breath. It, it really is one of those key signs that we see uh, when when there is a, a either a bad tooth or multiple bad teeth. So we may have um, some diseased teeth that need to be treated. Um, despite, let's say, you know, let's say those teeth have been treated, um, but bad breath is kind of something that you you deal with regularly with your kitty. Um, in those instances, um, first of all, the you know the assessment is important. Make sure there's nothing new that's popped up. Um, there's the the the, uh, the VOHC really is is the resource that I would guide you to. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there are so many products that are out on the market, and I can't tell you how many of them just don't do anything. And what that concerns me about is. Well, you're putting something in front of your pet and your pet is going to eat it or it's going to drink it. But what do you know about the toxicity of that, that product? Is it potentially, you know, not doing anything? And at the worst, uh, is it potentially harming your pet? So definitely uh, do make sure that you're using um, the, the VOHC resource. Great. Uh, next question. Uh, we have a question about uh, Gracie the cat. Uh, says, I've been adding pumpkin to my cat Gracie's food daily for about one week now. Uh, she had been somewhat constipated and it seemed to be helping. She is 15 years old, bless her, and has been on a kidney diet since I brought her home when she was seven. Is it mm -hmm. all right to continue adding pumpkin to her meals indefinitely? Uh, Bailey, she eats both wet and dry, mm -hmm. and I only add it to her wet food. Her appetite is good. Okay. Um, okay. So th that actually does speak really well to the um, the slide that I had on senior patients. Um, senior patients really struggle with a lot of different things. Um, constipation can actually be a secondary sign of um, sometimes like things like kidney disease. Um, dehydrating processes like kidney disease, also diabetes, um, can can cause constipation in cats who otherwise didn't have constipation. Um, I will actually very commonly see constipation um, in arthritic cats. Um, one very particular area of pain uh, in cats is right by their tail, so right where their lower back meets their tail. Um, that's a very common area for uh, for arthritic pain. And so some of these kitties, um, and we can actually see this in dogs too, when they are uh, attempting to defecate or attempting to urinate, they just can't position themselves um, like they used to. And so they won't poop as regularly as they were before. They might not urinate as regularly as they were before. Um, and so then we start to see something like constipation. Certainly constipation can happen just because constipation happens as well. So what I would say um, is, is certainly uh, schedule an appointment with, with your veterinarian. Let's make sure Gracie is checked out. Make sure um, Gracie's lab work is checked and her physical examination is checked. Um, I will say that, you know, I, I can't necessarily give specific advice on um, uh, Gracie's uh, treatments, but Pumpkin is generally pretty innocuous, so I can't imagine that it's necessarily um, hurting her. So until you're able to have her seen, um, if it's if it's helping her, I, I can't imagine that that is uh, going to be a problem. Great. Uh, we have three or four more questions that have come mm -hmm. through, so keep them coming. Uh, and a reminder, this the, the, your questions can be about your pet's oral care. It could be about other issues as well. Mm -hmm. So we have an expert on the line uh, that we've got for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. <laughs> uh, so take, please take advantage of this opportunity, uh, folks. So we'll keep going here. Uh, someone asked, uh, what are the green chews, you know, the ones that you mentioned in your presentation, yeah. what, what are those called and are they just for dogs or also cats? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so the chews are, I think you were referring to that little Jack Russell Terrier here with the, the chew. Um, those are greenies. Um, so greenies are on the uh, VOHC list and I highly recommend them. Um, the, uh, the one that you're seeing in the picture here is, is specifically geared towards dogs, but the company does make um, greenies treats for cats as well. Um, one thing that I will say, Greenies has, like, they have really succeeded in what they're doing and have also branched out. So they'll make all sorts of treats for, like, other things that are not just dental care. Um, so just make sure when you're looking at the Greenies packaging that um, you're looking, that you're choosing the one that is geared towards dental care, both um, for the cats and for the dogs. Great. And uh, one of our uh, participants just said, Costco makes a good knockoff. Uh, so <laughs> you can find that at Costco. Uh, uh, I, well, 
Uh, let me just comment on that. I'm sure that yes. they do. Um, if Costco's if Costco's knockoff has the VOHC seal on it, go for it. True. That True. you know that that's fine. But if it doesn't, I I, I can't speak to the efficacy. Good point. Excellent point. Uh, great. Next question: uh, Are pigs knuckles okay? My pooch loves them. Ah. Um. Well, technically, I guess pig pig knuckles. Um. There's like pig ears and pig knuckles stuff like that technically uh, should be cartilage. So practice that rule of thumb. If you can, if you can create an indent with your thumbnail into, the, um, into that chew, then yes, it, it is fine. Um, as long as your dog doesn't have any um, like upset stomach issues, sometimes with like cartilage and pig ears and stuff like that, some dogs will like, they love them so much that they'll just totally chew them up and like leave this like slobbery mess and then accidentally swallow it or take it down the wrong pipe. So make sure you're um, uh, just watching over them as they're doing it. But if it if it fits the thumbnail rule, you're good to go. Right. Uh, we have two similar questions, kind of two different angles. Um, what? How often do you recommend that a cat gets a dental cleaning? I'm assuming mm. that's from a, a professional. And mm -hmm. the other side of that is how often should we be brushing a cat or dog's teeth? Oh, I love those questions. Those are both really quick, great questions. Um, so as far as cleaning, I do say a, a rule of thumb, let's say in an ideal world. In an ideal world, I advise that all uh, dogs and cats' teeth be clean once per year. We think about ourselves, we go to our dentists um, twice a year, and in between that, we're brushing, we're flossing, we're you know doing all this sorts of home dental care on ourselves. Um, so even despite that, we still are advised to go to our dentist uh, twice a year. So for our cats and dogs, if we can even get them in minimally once per year to do that, that is ideal. Um, that being said, some cats um, and some dogs, depending on that home dental care, they may not need to go in. They may not need to have their teeth cleaned um, as frequently as once per year. Every individual is a little bit um, different. Um, and then as far as um, brushing the teeth, I'll kind of answer uh, brushing the teeth as well as home dental care as a whole. Um, brushing the teeth, the AVDC, that, that group that I mentioned uh, of boarded veterinary dental specialists, they recommend brushing teeth five times per week. So your goal is five times per week if you initiate brushing of the teeth. In addition to that, any other uh, home dental care item that you use, whether it's a greenie or it's a dental diet, um, food additive, water additive, um, those are bonus items. So if you can, if you can do like two things per day, that's incredible. Um, if you, my, my advice would be, let's say you're brushing five times per week and then your dog or cat loves greenies chews, well give a chew or a treat um, every single day. So then you have seven days of, of treatment and five of those days include brushing. Excellent. Uh, last question that has come in, uh, so keep those coming. I see one more that's popped up. Um, question is, I know you spoke about staying away from antlers and bones for dogs' toys. Mm. Um, are there any cat toys that should be avoided? That's a really good question. I do not, not as far as a tooth fracture is concerned. So the uh, cat toys, the things that I don't necessarily avoid all sorts of cat toys. There are so many different cat toys on the market. Um, that are just like for play wise. Uh, when we're talking about dental care wise, uh, cat treats tend to be like greenies. Um, there are a few water additives. Um, there were some dental chews from another company, but I don't believe that they've been making them, but VOHC has the most current information for sure. Um, as far as just as a, as a general rule toys, um, watch for toys that have like stringy items, feathery items, items that your cat can ingest. Um, and that doesn't mean that your cat can't necessarily play with them. But if you see uh, like uh, toys that have pieces that can potentially fall off, they look loose, um, or your cat likes to chew those kinds of pieces off, then make sure you're supervising. And the reason I mention that is because um, cats can sometimes, and, and dogs can do it too, they can eat and swallow things that they're not supposed to, and those things um, can cause intestinal obstruction. Great, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, a few more questions popped up. When brushing a dog's teeth, if the gums start bleeding, is this just because I'm brushing too hard, or is this a mm. sign of something more? Mm, good question. I, you, you know, you're right, it could be both. If, um, if it is, like, if all over the mouth, 
Well, actually, hang on. I have even a better way of, of talking about this. Um, let's look at this guy's teeth. So um, we can see how healthy um, these gums are. So we can see there's no redness along the gum lines here. They're really nice and healthy pink. And let's actually look at this guy for comparison. So if you look right along here, there's some redness, a little bit of swelling, and it actually is a little bit more normal towards this side of the, this aspect of the tooth. And then you can see this tooth is totally normal. So if your dog's teeth, if the gums look like this, then, then yeah, if they're bleeding, then you're right. It, it may just be that you're brushing too hard. But if the gums look like this um, or like this, then that means that there is some dental disease present and the gums are just actually really um, inflamed and more likely to bleed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next, what kind of water additive do you recommend? Okay, yeah. Um, actually, VOHC does have, um, they have a, a company called Healthy Mouths that I believe is on their list. Um, and then I have in, like as a prescription product, we have a product um, called Cleansident. Um, and then there's another product that I really like. And that product has like gone on and off the market just based on what the company is able to produce. Um, but there's a company called Verbac that I absolutely love. Um, and they have something called a CET uh, dental rinse. Great. Um, what risks are there to putting my dog under anesthesia? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, anesthesia certainly is something that um, is, is serious. It's not just, you know, something that we want to uh, take, uh, take on casually. Um, so risks of anesthesia include adverse reactions to medications. So um, we could have um, uh, changes to our, either our respiration, um, heart rate, or blood pressure. Um, in more severe instances, um, it, it can be fatal. It's very, that risk is very low. Um, so the American Animal Hospital Association actually assessed um, the risk of anesthesia in dogs and cats, and it was like, I want to say like 0.06% uh, for, for something like anesthetic death. So when I talk about that, it's, it's because I do know that it can happen, but I want to let you know that that risk is very rare. Um, one thing, um, or actually a few things that I, I would like to address on that matter, it's very important before putting any uh, dog or cat under anesthesia, it's very important um, to have an, a, a, a blood assessment, a urine assessment. How do the kidneys uh, look? How, do the, how does the liver look, our, our organ function? Um, are, are, are organ functions okay? Because if they are not, then that means that we have to first address those issues um, before we move into anesthesia. Um, because those potential, those issues, if not, if left untreated, can actually put our pet at uh, risk of harm under anesthesia. Um, the second part that I'd like to address is the actual anesthetic monitoring itself. Um, so when you have uh, somebody, uh, a trained veterinary technician, uh, monitoring, both physically monitoring parameters of the patient's respiration, temperature, uh, blood pressure, um, heart rate, as well as monitoring um, specialized equipment to look at um, the EKG, the pulse oximetry, so oxygenation levels. Um, these are the aspects that help uh, prevent anesthetic complications. When we see abnormalities, we can stop the procedure or adjust the procedure as needed. Um, but if a procedure does not have a dedicated technician um, who is trained to monitor these, these um, aspects, then that is uh, when we, when we um, need to, to, to really worry a little bit more. Um, but I do anticipate that when you have that conversation with your veterinarian, um, your veterinarian is going to be able to, to openly and honestly tell you um, what type of anesthetic monitoring and, and safety uh, measures that they take. Mm, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Quick side note, I was hoping that your cat might make a cameo, so I'm getting some, some background uh, cameo footage. Uh, some oh. <laughs> oh, you are? Is yeah. he here? I felt like, unless maybe I'm seeing things. You might be uh, seeing, hold on, my dog's butt. Um, it could have been a dog. Is yeah. over there. Oh, maybe it was a dog. So, yeah. <laughs> I she, I has, <laughs> she has asthma and she, and she coughs and then when she gets excited about stuff then, then oh, he, man. maybe that's who you were hearing it now now's made an, ex, an appearance earlier while you were showing the video but i haven't gotcha. seen him since <laughs> all right 
Uh, we do have another question, last one, I believe, yeah. uh, but we're open to a few more if anyone else has a burning question. Uh, this question uh, is about dental cleaning. How much does it cost for an annual dental cleaning? Approximate mm -hmm. range. Uh, yeah. This particular instance is for a 90 pound dog. Uh, okay, so we usually will make anesthetic treatment plans that are tailored towards uh, the dog or the cat itself. Um, the anesthetic treatment plan, so actually the bulk of the, the, the dental procedure, or rather, see, I need to change my terminology. Mm -hmm. The bulk of the, com the complete uh, oral health assessment and treatment is uh, based on the anesthetic uh, medication and the sedatives and pain medications that are involved. Um, so in that instance, what, what that means is that um, the weight of our patient and the types of drugs that our patient requires will vary vastly. And so it actually is very difficult to give a pinpoint, um, this is how much it costs um, for, for a dental procedure. Um, I would say that even, um, I'm trying to think, the other thing that I, I do uh, make sure that I keep in mind is that when we're looking at the mouth, um, the treatments will also vary. So if I'm seeing a patient who has very early um, dental disease, we grade periodontal disease from uh, grade one to grade four. Grade one is kind of that, um, that, that mouth that I showed where there's a little bit of uh, gingivitis um, by that fractured tooth. Um, and grade four is where teeth are kind of, they're falling out, they're very diseased. Um, so the, the grade of the, uh, the periodontal disease will also affect that treatment plan. Great, thank you. Uh, a good question from Jess. Uh, do you have any advice for opening a business in Uptown? Oh, that's a, well, work with the Chamber of Commerce. These guys were great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I remember even as I was um, uh, finding, you know, my, my location, I think somebody texted me and they're like, is this you? Because Uptown Chamber of Commerce had already uh, figured it out. They already knew what was going on. <laughs> and there was like a newspaper article about it. And I hadn't even announced anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. And Jess, of course, we would uh, obviously uh, love to be in touch with you about that as well. Um, we can follow up with you. Uh, my colleague, John, who might just be a floating box on your screen. I'm not sure if you can see him as a panelist, but he is, uh, he is our go-to guy for um, helping local businesses. All of us at the Chamber are, but uh, we'd be happy. We have resources and would be happy to, to chat with you at any time about that. So we obviously think Uptown's a great place to, uh, to be and open a business. So uh, we're excited yeah. to, to have you know businesses like Magnolia, which how long has, has Magnolia been open now? Um, it'll be two years this upcoming February. Okay, man, time flies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's crazy, it's crazy. And it, it's been actually exciting even during the uh, this age of COVID right now to, to see some businesses opening up in Uptown and, and yeah. doing well. So we're, we're excited to see that. We obviously want to keep that, you know, momentum going. So, um, so yeah, so Jess will be in touch. Thanks for uh, giving us your email there. Um, I think that I got to everyone's questions um, if not, feel free to, uh, to pop it in there now. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, uh, is that, you know, I think we've kind of referenced that this is a series that we're hoping to do. Um, this kind of came out of the idea of like, oh, you know, things are kind of virtual for the time being. How can we still kind of, um, you know, bring our local businesses to people and, and make sure that people in the neighborhood know about them, know in the, uh, people in the area know that they're, what they do and who they are and that they're open for business. Uh, so we appreciate you all being here and for supporting local, no matter what neighborhood you're in, uh, we encourage everyone to shop local, support those small businesses where you can, um, and uh, hopefully we'll all come out of this okay. Uh, but having said that, if you have any ideas on things you'd like to see us um, offer uh, for future uh, webinars in this series, if you wanna know about real estate, if you wanna know about you know, fill in the blank, you know, uh, the Uptown Chamber has a really great uh, variety of, of professionals and experts um, that are represented. So uh, we'll be doing more of these, and uh, we'd love to have your input on that if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see us offer. Um, we will follow up uh, with the resources uh, that Dr. Joshi mentioned in the presentation. Make sure you have that. So if you didn't get a screenshot, don't sweat it. We'll get that to you. Um, I also wanted to mention that we're currently, the Uptown Chamber is currently 
running a shop local, shop small campaign called Winter Warmth in Uptown. Uh, we're running it pretty much the whole month of December, where if you're supporting local businesses, you know, any Uptown business like Magnolia or your local restaurant or where you get your haircut, um, if you submit receipts to us, uh, you're eligible to win prizes and gift cards. Uh, we're doing those weekly. We actually have a drawing that ends midnight tonight. We're going to announce the winners tomorrow on our social media. But if you have a receipt um, handy from any local Uptown business, you can submit it uh, to info at exploreuptown.org. Uh, I'm going to put a website into our chat um, where you can find all the details. But even after you know this week's challenge ends, going to have a few more so you can win by submitting receipts and or tagging local businesses on social media facebook instagram super easy peasy uh lemon squeezy and you can win win some good stuff so that's a shameless plug for support, supporting local not so not so shameful it's more uptown proud uh dr josh anything else you want to add uh yeah well i'm glad that you brought up the winter warmth and, and wilson avenue is looking so beautiful um, thanks to your guys' effort. So I, I love that you guys are, are doing that. Um, I wanted to actually add a plug for um, a raffle that Wagnolia Veterinary Clinic is holding. Uh, it is a charity raffle. Um, it is going to uh, benefit the Friendship, uh, Friendship Pet Pantry. So the Friendship Pet Pantry is providing food uh, for for pets for for families who right now especially during COVID and even you know beyond COVID are are, are struggling um, to make end, ends meet and and make sure that they get um, uh, food for their pets so we will be uh, starting that raffle uh, I, I we were, the hope was end of this week so hopefully we'll 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 meet that target otherwise early next week um, we've got some really cool prizes um, we've got a a, a a year's worth of uh, combination heartworm and flea tick prevention, a, a year's worth for a, for a cat and a year's worth for a dog. So those are like super, super primo prizes. Um, and then we'll, we're actually working with other uh, uptown businesses um, to, to try to get some packages together as well. So um, P, please do keep an eye on our Instagram and our Facebook um, for updates on that. And I'll be sure when I send out the info tomorrow to include all of Wagnolia's social media. Uh, so website, Instagram, Facebook. So if you want to keep in touch with with them, uh, that would be wonderful. Um, I think that's it. Uh, again, thank you all so much. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on to, to learn about a local uptown business. And uh, we'll be in touch very soon. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.